Hey guys, so some of you were asking about the land and the price of uh, virgin land out here. And, um, and, you know, I made a comment about that you have to be careful about purchasing land that's cheap because a lot of times, even if the land is cheap, you don't know what you're doing. You'll come out here and spend a huge part of your money. So I'm about to get into that as soon as we get back. So stay tuned on the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Hey guys, so welcome back. You found my channel. This is the Eric McNeil Be Free Show, where we talk about being financially independent, responsible for self, enjoying life and empowering others free so today i just want to talk about uh, the land and purchasing land and how dicey this can all get if you're really doing this for the first time you don't know what you're doing you can blow through the money that you're expecting to spend on your house so in trying to actually prepare the land now i'm standing at the edge of the property here and I'm going to switch the camera around so that uh, I can point at the wall. I'm, I'm like right at the wall that we're building around the property. It's a five acre property. So the new owners wanted to put a six foot wall around the entire property. All right, guys, so here's the wall. You can see the wall coming up and um, we have some work, to, a couple of workers over here. They're removing actually trying to remove some of the larger tree trunks uh, that are near the wall so they won't become a problem later. So uh, this is going to be when it's all done and said a six foot wall and some people were asking you know um, why are they uh, putting a wall around and you know some people felt like they're separating themselves but I, I explained in another video that they had some problems in the uh, United States. See, so this can happen anywhere that um, people encroach on your land and if you let them encroach too long and you try to take them to court, then, um, you know, they have a right to that land. Um, it's like squatters' rights. So, you know, so you have to be vigilant about protecting your land. And actually, the landowners that just purchased the land directly uh, behind this wall they have three acres and they said that another landowner uh, who's next to us they said that they saw him moving the pillars that were set so people can come move your pillars and that's why I also advise people to concrete their pillars down because if somebody comes and move your pillars and you have five acres and they moved the pillars and now uh, you have 4.9, you wouldn't know unless you uh, had a surveyor to come back out and survey the property or you know how to check the coordinates yourself. You wouldn't know they moved those pillars. So you have to be very vigilant here about protecting your land. So anyway, they want to put this uh, six foot wall going up all the way around the property. And, um, and uh, you know, and I talk about how dicey this whole land thing can get. Well, the neighbors back here, whom I told you just purchased three acres and they saw the guy moving the pillars. So they wanted to, um, you know, they've started planning on their property. That's uh, m m my friend Raz Leo and his wife. They started planning on their property, but they wanted to have a borehole drill, which is a well, as we call it in the U.S., but it's a borehole. And um, the truck that comes and drill that well is very large, very large truck. And so um, they had a road put through their property. And, um, and I warned them about that road. I warned them to be very careful about, you know, when they bring the bulldoze that they really need to understand what they're doing because if not, uh, they're going to have a road that they can't use and they're just going to spend a lot of money. And true enough, the bulldozer quoted them eight hours worth of work. Said it's going to take eight hours. 
And the bulldozer came very early that morning. The wife was here, but the husband wasn't. The bulldozer finished uh, their road in probably four hours, no more than four hours, and was gone. And when we came out and checked it, the road, when I checked, I said, that, that road, is, is, it, it looks too steep for you guys to use. I don't think you're going to be able to use that. And then uh, the builder here, Brandon, who built my house, and he came and rode. He said, man, that road, he said, you know, I wish I had been here, but that road isn't going to be usable for them. They, they just wasted their money. So at any rate, um, when they asked the, the person to come to drill the borehole, and he looked at the road and he said, no, nah, I can't drive that road. So he came onto our property and he said, I can drive up through their property if, you know, uh, if only they didn't have this wall here. He said, you know, ask them if they would allow us to remove. They wanted to remove like some of the, the, the blocks that we've already set, you know, enough to drive his truck through. And they said that, you know, they would use the workers who are working here to remove the blocks and pay them and then to put the blocks you know put new blocks back and they say they would pay for the in the work in the concrete and cement and i was like mm, i don't know it's like i don't have a price say but you know it's not my property i said i got to ask the the owners the new owners so i asked the owners and they was like you know hey, we we just really want to get this thing finished, you know, that'll destroy our timetable, you know, so um, really, you know, uh, we just prefer that we didn't do that. And there's a lizard crawling as I'm speaking. I guess he was hiding out waiting for me to leave, and I didn't leave, so he decided to go ahead and take a chance and, and run. So anyway, um, where was I? So anyway, yeah, so the new owners was like, mm, nah, that don't sound like a good idea to us, you know. Um, we just really want our work finished. So I was like, yep, I understand. I overstand. I understand. So at any rate, you know, I informed them that, hey, uh, you know, you guys are going to have to come up with a plan B to get that uh, to get that truck up here. So the plan B is to wait to uh, the chief decides that he's going to bring the bulldozer back and then they're going to have to uh, use the bulldozer because it costs a lot of money to even bring the bulldozer here because you can't drive the bulldozer on the road it has you know it has the metal uh, tires on it. it's one of those big strong bulldozers so you have to put it on the truck and I think that costs maybe almost half of the cost of the total bulldozer is like just bringing it here and then um, of course each day that is here is costing you a lot of money because that truck has to you know stay here too and come back and get it so at any rate um, I'm just walking down you can see the wall I'm just walking down the uh, property line and you'll be able to see just how steep it gets so if you come here and I'm pretty sure that that bulldozer driver knew that very well that no large truck was going to be able to drive that road like you know but this is where you have to be very vigilant in really know what you're doing and I had very clearly warned the owners about purchasing and then starting to spend money and not getting proper uh, help and you know proper advice and so a lot of times we decide that we want to take shortcuts and we need to save some money and we end up spending double the money that we thought so you're gonna spend the money whether you spend it in the upfront design phase doing your project right or whether you finish or whether you spend it fixing and correcting things and so now we have a situation where they're going to have to spend the money making corrections to their road and um, so they're waiting for the chief the chief said he's gonna bring the bulldozer back uh, to do a road for him to go to some property that he just gave to his daughter. 
So they say when that happens, then they will uh, make sure that they use the bulldozer as well and have the, the, the him to correct the road. But I'm passing right now their road, and you may not n notice how steep it is on the camera. It, it may not be readily obvious to you, but if you walk that road, it is extremely steep, and no large truck is going to um, be willing to go up that road. I mean, that's, you know, you're asking for problems. So anyway, now, if that wasn't bad enough, so my other neighbors came over, <laughs> and um, they saw the road, and they said, oh, that's the road is steep here. I said, yep, that's, that road is steep. They said, well, we're going to have to have a bulldozer driver come here back here, and he's going to do uh, roads for us, two roads. And I said, okay, well, you just got to be careful because you see what just happened to them. They say, oh, yeah, that, that's too steep. So we come back, and after the bulldozer came, I heard the bulldozer out very early, boom, boom, doing their road. And I said, well, I guess they're over there making sure that their road gets done properly because they see what just happened to this neighbor. So I'm pretty sure that they got theirs uh, under control, right? I don't have to keep uh, reiterating it. And so, true enough, when the bulldozer finished, and I came out here and looked at their road, and here's, I'm passing their, their first road right now. And that road is worse than the other one. So I'm like, oh man, come on. Y'all got to be kidding. So I don't know what happened there, but this is their road. And their road is steeper than the other road. And they had very, very good knowledge beforehand. And so, anyway, I'm continuing to walk down the hill. And you will see we're going to pass their second road. So that bulldozer driver just, he came. I, I, I don't think it was the same bulldozer driver who did both roads. I think it was uh, a different bulldozer driver. <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyway, this is how quick you can lose money here. So when people quoting you these prices and the prices seem cheap, but they're cheap because you end up spending along the way more and more money. And so we're passing their second road that they had, and it's the same scenario. Very steep road. So they came out here uh, a few days ago to look at it. And <laughs> then they came back up to the house disappointed. They say, Eric, we're going to have to bring the bulldozer driver back out to fix this road. And, you know, um, and they say, you know, they couldn't come and, and uh, supervise it because one of them lives way in Kamasi. And then the other one lives in uh, Eastly Gone, and they're, they're uh, very busy, very busy professionals and stuff, like engineers, and, um, you know, it's like we couldn't supervise this, but it's like, you know, you give instructions and you think people can do the right thing, and uh, for some reason they just don't do the right thing. So that's money wasted. They're back, you know, they're coming back. Uh, and because what happens if some... Uh, dump truck as we call it in the US they call it a tipper here if the tipper comes up here and you know how heavy those trucks is when they're loaded or if that um, that truck that drills the borehole comes up here that huge truck well what happens you know is that they try to go up this road and they can't pick up any speed and those trucks are so heavy and it, what will eventually happen is they'll go and then they'll start to come back and they'll lose their brakes and they'll go right off this mountain and then and that's what will happen they'll go right off the mountain and they'll keep going down into there's a factory there's a charcoal factory at the bottom and they'll go straight into that charcoal factory so if they don't get these roads fixed that's going to be uh, the next outcome is uh, I'm just gonna sit here and wait for that and you know I pray it doesn't happen 
I pray they get these roads fixed before some driver is is silly enough to try it. You know, so um, but anyway, that's where we at today. And uh, I'm actually gonna go down the mountain. I'm looking for a shortcut to take. So yeah, I'm trying to figure out I don't wanna go the entire distance. So usually I'll cut through the bush. You know, I'm a bush guy now. So even the workers be, I did, I'd be walking with the workers staying on the property. And uh, I'd be like, you want to take a shortcut through the bush? And oh, no, we, we go to the road. We go to the road. So um, I'm like, man, I don't know how they make men these days. You know? Like punks now, you know, scared of a little bush. It's like, hey. So anyway, I just go through the bush. I'm just, um, my builder, Brandon, he's the ultimate bush person. So when we first came and moved up here, it was just nothing but trees and bushes. You couldn't see. So he, when he went up through into the bush and he stayed about an hour and we was worried about him. He came back and he said, I found the land. I said, all right, Indiana Jones, what land at? He said, it's up there, it's a nice piece of land. I said, how you know it's a nice piece of land? It's trees and bushes and everything on it. He said, trust me, it's a nice piece of land. And sure enough, I just had to trust him because I couldn't tell that the land was relatively flat. But he went up through there. Even when he took us up through there, you really couldn't uh, see that. You know, so you have to have some experience about you. And he had enough experience where he knew. And so we just had to put our faith in uh, believing that he knew what he was talking about and sure enough when they cleared the property it was relatively flat real nice piece of land and, um, and it worked out but if you don't have nobody like that around you because you decide you're gonna skip the uh, you know design phase and you decide you're gonna take a shortcut and you decide you're gonna save some money then uh, you best believe you're gonna end up paying more at the end of the day for something that's half done. Um, so right now I'm coming down the mountain and you can see that there's a lot of coconut husk here. And if you follow Wotemeyer, you saw that uh, the young brother Amin has this uh, coconut factory that's um, the largest in West Africa. Well, this is it. We were actually here before he came with the factory and his family owns some land here and so they decided to put the coconut factory right here you know he was able to get funding he said from his university so um, I don't know the status of uh, everything yet but I know it's a lot of coconut husk here so um, if I need some coconut husk I'm coming right here and telling the mean hey you got all them coconut husks down there that's crowding my path. So if I need some, then I'm coming right here, buddy. And there's a lot of uses for this stuff. This stuff is actually valuable if you know how to use it. Um, so anyway, I'm just walking through it. So I'm like the king of the coconut husk heel right now. Coming through all this stuff. A lot of people be thinking I'm crazy because I just go through this stuff but yeah yeah so you can see this is the uh, coconut factory coconut husk uh, charcoal factory they take that coconut husk and they turn it into charcoal right so it's, and because this stuff usually just ends up all over the city and in on the beaches and everywhere and so he's taking a material that's trash and he's turning it into uh, a profit and he's cleaning up at the same time so you know I applaud what he's doing hey guys so here I was walking and I seen this huge earthworm here now so that's an earthworm and he's playing dead now since I touched him so let's see what he does hey fella see now I'm going to tell you something. If you talk to young children today, 
They'll be they'll be afraid to pick something like an earthworm up. They'll be like, ooh, ooh, it's an earthworm. You need to be careful, it'll bite you, it'll bite you. And we didn't have problems like that when we were young. We played in the dirt. Like, you know, you have these young people, they be getting all these sicknesses and stuff because they don't play in the dirt and the mothers and parents try to sterilize them and so they have like bubble children. And, uh, but this is the way, you know, you protect your child and grow their immune system. You let them play in the dirt. You let them play with things like earthworms. But what they do is they went on YouTube or something and they read these stories and they be like, Oh, I researched on YouTube and YouTube said it, 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 it's a possibility they can bite you and it's a possibility they can do this. So they just have this messed up uh, idea you know um, they're disillusional a lot of young people now they don't know how to relate to um, nature right so earthworm is extremely valuable to our existence you know so um, yeah that's what you want earthworms anyway I'm just walking and I thought I'll share that with you this little earthworm it is actually pretty long I guess um, almost a foot long. Yeah, almost a foot long. Anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button, like, share, comment. You know the routine. And you can also, as I said, you can follow me if you like to read. Follow me on Facebook. Um, you know, you can send me a friend request on Facebook. It, Facebook.com forward slash Eric McNeil is free. And I knew my phone was going to ring uh, while I'm in the process of recording this, but I'm not even going to edit it and do it again. That's the thing, I don't like doing all that editing. You young people, you do all that editing. I'm just going to talk and say what I have to say. And you guys know that mistakes are made. So, anyway, again, my name is Eric McNeil. And this is the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Hoorah! Ahoo! Now be free.